as many of you are aware, um, I lost a long-standing member of this church and my grandmother, um, Janine Lawrence, last year, as our Lord called her home. Um, my grandmother was the last of my grandparents, and with her loss, my life has entered a new period, one in which the unfailing love and support of grandparents now lives on in memories and in my heart. And as both of my parents worked, my grandparents had a major hand in shaping the man I have grown to become, well, me. I often credit my grandmother Shirley Dawkins for my strong imagination and storytelling abilities. She had an absolute love for children and she had fostered many children years before I was even a thought. I remember sitting on her lap as she read me story after story, and as she filled my head with adventure and a highly detailed imagination. I wasn't just hearing words on a piece of paper. I was literally getting the details for the story that I was now a part of. And I remember we watched a lot of Disney growing up. Disney had a good message and a good um, teaching skill that was one of the few things available in my time as tapes had just become to become open on the market when I was a kid. And uh, I remember watching Disney's The Jungle Book. And uh, upon finishing the movie, I entered Grandma Shirley's backyard. My imagination was running free and wild, and I was still in that jungle. And as I walked around my jungle, I could hear Baloo singing the bare necessities. Just the bare necessities of life, yeah, man. And I remember him eating ants. And found myself a little hungry, so I decided I was going to try to do the same thing. Um, needless to say, that didn't go over very well, as I got bit well before I could bite back. With the failed ant feast frustratingly fresh in my mind, I turned to the only other thing that Blue ate that was found in my jungle. It was a red prickly pear. It looked so pretty up there on top of that green thing. Now I knew to stay away from the green thing because it had plenty of needles. But little did I know, or rather little did the little me know, that those things are called prickly because they have needles too. And very small ones, small ones that look almost like fur than anything else. Well, I managed to make this one all the way into my mouth. I don't remember the pain that I was most certainly in. But what I do remember is my grandma Shirley very patiently with a small pocket knife trying to scrape off the needles from my tongue and my hands. There was no yelling, no outburst of damnation, just the gentle hands of a nurse who was carrying out the commandment of Jesus to love one another. I declare right now today on a very blessed Mother's Day here in 2021 in front of all you witnesses that for years the Christian world has been studying holy texts for centuries trying to understand Jesus so as to gather a blueprint of how to live a life in Jesus Christ to the fullest and purest way. I declare that God hath provided for us a living blueprint. And I speak, of course, on grandmothers. Grandmothers are bound to their grandchildren in such a way that John 15, verse 16, really makes a whole lot of sense. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. Grandmothers have gone and they have produced their own fruit in the way of children. And those children have borne fruit of their own so that their own fruit truly has lasted. 
Another story I remember in my grandmother's presence was the uh, Whittier Narrows earthquake of 1987. I was six at the time, and being so young, time really seemed to take a lot longer than it really did back then. So the quake that lasted a whole 30 seconds was way longer in my head. I remember everything shaking, and I saw to the horror right there in front of me one of my grandmother's favorite lamps getting ready to tip. It was like time had slowed down and had given me a chance to rush out and save that lamp. So as I moved to try to save grandma's favorite lamp, I had a hand grab me by the collar of my shirt, pull me back into safety, and as I watched, the lamp crashed and went into pieces on the floor. Grandma surely looked at me and asked me what I was doing. I told her I was trying to save her lamp. And she told me that nothing she had was worth my life to save. I learned a true lesson on love in that moment. You see, grandmothers all have their rules, just like all parents. In fact, if one studies one's opposing grandmothers, their actions will offer an insight into the way one's parents are, as grandmothers are the blueprints of parenting. Jesus tells us that if we keep his commandments, then we will abide in his love. So if we live within a grandmother's set of rules, that page is not the right page, I can tell you that. <laughs> Grandchildren will abide in their warm, overflowing love. Grandmothers have an abundance love to shed on to their grandchildren. This seems like Jesus and grandmothers have more in common once again. Jesus said that he commands us in love and living within his commandments so that we may live in his joy, then our joy shall be complete. This part reminds me of the pride that grandmothers have in their grandchildren. When grandchildren are good, loving, and excel under the love and affection of their grandmothers, they too receive joy in seeing the beaming pride in the face of their grandmother. I was born with hereditary pancreatitis, and I inherited that from the Lawrence side of my family lines, along with this floppy ear from my grandpa Don. I spent a lot of time with doctors and in hospitals growing up due to my pancreas attacks. And there were several times during my life that I got this overwhelming sense that my grandpa and grandma Lawrence felt responsible. This responsibility continued into adulthood, and I remember the day that I had an AFib episode. I still remember waking up and staring at the alarm clock and thinking, that can't be the time. You see, I had woken up late for work. I got up, rushed to get ready, and made my way over to Lake Skinner, where I was supposed to open up the store early in the morning. It took me about a good hour for me to realize that my heart was still beating the same weird way that it was beating when I was rushing around, uh, getting ready for work. At that point, I was able to say that maybe it's the adrenaline making my heart beat this way. An hour in and no customers around, I knew it was no longer adrenaline. So my dad was still working at the time, so I called up Grandma Janine, just so someone knew what was going on, and told her, hey, Grandma, I think something's wrong with my heart, um, so I'm just letting you know that I'm going to drive myself to the hospital. So. Can you fill people in? I appreciate it. And there was this awkward pause on the end of the phone, and she said, what do you think you're doing? No, you wait right there. I will come, and I will take you to the hospital. She dropped everything she was doing, all of her plans for the entire day, 
just because of me. I learned again more about love. You see, Jesus said, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. While most grandmothers may not necessarily have to lay down their lives in a literal manner, they are willing to lie down or pause their own lives in order to walk besides their grandchildren when they are in trouble. This is a selfless act done straight out of love, a beaming example of acting and living in the way of Jesus Christ. Time and time again, God was showing me how to be a good Christian simply by providing me two excellent examples of amazing women who would forever impact my life and how I see and interact with other people. Graham and I took a trip back east to Nebraska where my grandmother was born. It was right as I was first getting involved with this church. She and my grandpa used to take road trips a lot and she had not been on one in years. I knew she was getting older and I knew I had the time as I wasn't working then. And I asked her if she thought it would be a good idea to take a trip together. Oh boy. She thought that was the greatest thing in the world. She was so thrilled. She jumped into the emotions of planning every aspect of that trip straight down to where we were stopping to get gas. <laughs> and she planned it out so quickly that I was totally amazed. It was during this trip that Grandma and I really had a bonding moment just to ourselves. We talked about the past. We made forever moments at each place we stopped, such as Boot Hill in Tombstone, Arizona, who, or where rather, me and this woman that I loved as she walked around in stones and loose gravel with a cane, read the story of each grave there in Boot Hill in Tombstone, Arizona. And as we talked, we also talked about the future. She told me I was her favorite. She also told me that she hated that this was true because she loved all of us so much, all of her grandchildren. It was just that I was a special love. I was her first. Not only was I her first, but I was born almost a year after my uncle and her only son had passed away. It was during this trip that I felt something that recalled to me of John 15, 15. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends. Grandma Janine and I were more as equals during that trip than at any other point in life that I can remember. We had opened up and shared so much we were now on a shared footing. And little did I know that she was preparing me for a role reversal when I had to take care of her. In his book on understanding the scriptures of John, Lewis Foster states, finally, Jesus gave this tender assurance you are my friends if you do what I command, John 15, verse 14. Jesus' followers are no longer servants, but truly friends in whom he confines and to whom he brings every love, joy, and consideration. These are the circumstances in which the vine with its branches flourish. Just as the fruit-bearing branch needs rich, soil, sunshine, and rain. So the Christian needs love, obedience, and joy. Jesus assured the disciples in that solemn hour that he had loved them just as the Father in heaven loved him. His love, love would be unfaltering and eternal. My friends, 
grandmothers provide grandchildren that rich soil, sunshine and rain, that they can use to grow into morally strong people. They provide that love, obedience, and joy that every Christian needs to grow into the light of this world. But as time changes, and so do things, Grandma, in her later years, my grandmother, Janine, um, developed dementia. We had a lot of difficult moments, but we also had those moments where our eyes locked and Grandma would grab me by both her hands. Didn't matter if it was my hands, my arm, my neck, whatever she could grab, she held me with both hands. And she would tell me, I love you. Those moments are the ones I try to focus on and remember. I remember one hard particular day and she was so worried about getting home. How am I getting home? And I told her, Grandma, look around. You are home. In fact, everything you can see, you actually own. This is all yours. She looked around and stared in my eyes. How did I get so rich? Grandma Janine was teaching me even then. Her humble question and the look of shock over the answer showed me that her treasure was not locked up into the house in items and gems. It was not even until I pointed out to her that all of these items of worldly value she owned did that she even take notice of them. This tells me that her love of God through Jesus Christ and all those that she had and still did love, those were the treasures that she had held tightly. She walked in the path of God and she had showed me how to live in a way worthy of a follower of Christ. And now, as one chapter of my life closes, I'm about to embark on a new chapter of my life with my engagement to my fiance, who is also a mother. I'm excited to see this future grandmother grow into that person, the ultimate living example of how to live a life worthy of Jesus Christ. And with my marriage to the love of my life, I get another mother too and get to see another grandmother in action. So grandchildren everywhere, listen up. You have been chosen as well. Look into the eyes of your grandmother and see the love of Jesus beaming out upon you. Take care and learn your lessons. And grandmothers everywhere, keep on keeping on. Bake your love in all you do and remember that you are truly the living blueprint of Jesus Christ here on earth and you provide the love and joy of living in Christ to the newest fruit so that your fruit will continue into the future to bear more and more fruit for the glory of Jesus Christ and our Father. Thank you, Lord, for your understanding of us humans, for sending us your Son to guide us, and for mothers everywhere being the hands of God and shaping us all to do the work of God as well. What an amazing circle of life. Amen. Amen.